Hi, I'm Dr. Tim Kaczynski from Bingham Farms, Michigan, and today we're going to demonstrate the use of the Golden Dent Smart Denton Grinder. This is going to be a very uh, efficient way of grafting. So here we have a patient that um, presents with non-restorable mandibular anterior teeth that we deemed uh, to be extracted. We want to do an atraumatic extraction, graft the site in preparation for future dental implants. There are many different ways of grafting. We can use an allograft or a graft from another human, but here we're going to demonstrate the use of an autogenous graft used from actually the patient's own teeth, the patient's own root structure. So um, what we want to do is uh, atraumatically remove these, these um, non-functional teeth, and we have several instruments from Golden Dent uh, that I like to use. We have a separator, a bayonet, and serrated blades that help me make very precise incisions uh, in the area so that I can prepare the site uh, appropriately and as effectively as possible. Here we're taking a separator, placing it between the facial plate of bone and the root structure to kind of um, uh, remove the or, or loosen the tooth a little bit. We're then going to use the Golden Dent, Golden Dent Physics Forceps, which consists of four instruments, an upper uh, left, an upper right, an upper anterior, and a lower universal. It consists of two components, a beak, which is um, placed uh, subgingival one to three millimeters on the palatal or lingual surface, and the bumper, which is simply a center of rotation. We also have a molar series of golden dent uh, forceps, which allow us access in more challenging areas. You can see that um, the instrument is very effective placing the beak um, or the shovel-shaped part on the lingual surface. We're never squeezing the instrument. Rather, we're just rotating our wrist um, allowing the tooth to come up and out of the socket. The bumper is simply a fulcrum uh, or a center of rotation. The tooth will disengage as we get a physiologic response, an enzymatic release which breaks down the periodontal ligament. The tooth will then luxate up and out of the socket one to three millimeters quite efficiently and effectively. This is what I refer to as an atraumatic extraction. It's atraumatic to the facial plate of bone, atraumatic to the patient because there's no squeezing here, and also atraumatic to the doctor because it makes my procedure uh, very predictable and effective. We'll then take a tooth delivery instrument and rotate the teeth up and out of the socket, maintaining the facial plate of bone uh, wonderfully. Even a long cuspid tooth can be removed quite efficiently and effectively uh, using this innovative atraumatic technique of the Golden Dent Physics Forcep. So here I'm simply uh, eliminating or removing the non-restorable teeth and creating a site for our future socket preservation techniques. Um, these uh, simple socket preservation techniques are important following the atraumatic extraction of teeth, especially true when we're considering dental implants. Our periapical radiographs illustrate that all the root structures have been removed. And now we're going to talk about the um, golden dent uh, dentin grinder. Um, Using autographs is important. Uh, it's the gold standard, but using an, an autograph means uh, harvesting bone from another site, from the symphysis or from the ramus. And it's nice if I can actually use the root structure from the patient's own mouth to create a graft material that is not only osteoinductive, osteoconductive, but also has osteogenic properties because it has all the bone morphogenic proteins and growth factors um, uh, consistent within the graft particles. So once the teeth are extracted, uh, the teeth will be prepared using the golden dent uh, dentin grinder. Uh, the coronal portion of the teeth, in my situation, I will remove with a burr because I don't want to use any teeth that have any restorations or uh, fillings or root canal treated teeth should not be used. So here's the teeth that we extracted and I'm simply taking a burr and I'm just removing the coronal portion. Now you can use enamel, uh, that's not a problem, it'll just take longer to uh, resorb. Here we have the Golden Dents uh, grafting kit which is a wonderful um, self-contained grafting kit which consists of a curette, a sharp curette uh, that is used to remove any granulation tissue, a periosteal elevator, will, which will help me reflect, a, an Orban knife, which helps me make very, very precise incisions in my site. We have a bone file, which will um, 
uh, reduce or flatten any spicules. We have a, a condenser and a spoon, which will help me actually take the um, graph material to the site, and a forcep, which will help me in, in suturing. Um, a blade holder and a surgical for a surgical blade if we need uh, to do that, and a pair of scissors, which really work well. Uh, we'll have a, um, a needle holder, which will allow me to place the sutures, and then we have a, a nice um, sterile stainless steel um, um, container that allows me to place my graft. Here I'm taking my Orban knife and I'm making a nice controlled incision into the extracted site and elevating the uh, facial and lingual part, facial and lingual bone so that I can actually see any defects that may be present due to resorption of the roots. I'm going to take a, uh, uh, a rangeurs and simply remove the spicules and a bone file will flatten them and make them work very, very uh, flat and, and very well. Now what we're going to do is we're going to prepare the dent and grinder and we have a disposable chamber which will be removed from its sterile packaging and placed onto the dent and grinder base. The roots that we prepared will be placed into the grinder and processed for a total of about uh, 23 seconds. Um, you can see that the roots have been uh, cleaned and dried. They're placed into the, um, into the uh, disposable chamber. We set the grinding for three seconds. Uh, we will then set for 20 seconds the separation of the grafted material. The particulates will be about 250 to 1200 microns um, in diameter, which is a good, good uh, size for um, grafting. We're then going to put it in the uh, enclosed uh, jar and we're going to use a dentin cleanser which is sodium hydroxide and 20% ethanol and that is poured into the glass container that's, that's included with the, um, with the golden dent, dentin grinder and this particulate is soaked for about 10 minutes. After soaking a gauze is used to remove as much of the cleanser from the glass container as possible. Then we'll, um, after that, we will use a dentin wash of phosphated buffered saline, and this will be poured into the glass container, and the wash sits for three minutes. After this time, the wash is removed um, with a gauze also. The graft is now ready to use. We will carry it to the um, socket sites. Remember I said that this graft is osteoconductive, serving as a scaffold. It's also osteoinductive in that it stimulates progenitor cells to differentiate into osteoblasts. We must protect our graft site from invagination of epithelium. So here we're going to use a uh, EpiGuide from Golden Dent, um, which is a resorbable, long-acting, long-lasting resorbable membrane. Uh, it will be placed beyond a defect at least two millimeters and passively placed onto the lingual surface. This protects the graft site um, from invagination of epithelium. And here we used uh, Vicro sutures, um, which work very, very well to uh, control the site. This graft heals very quickly and very well because it is also osteogenic. We have bone morphogenic proteins, which um, are the cell mediators in this whole regeneration process. And it rapidly uh, differentiates into bone. Uh, dentin is very similar to bone in its chemical and biological composition. And so this uh, particulate will act as a scaffold and convert as quickly as seven weeks in the mandible and about three months in the maxilla. Um, new bone will be regenerated at this site and soft tissue response is excellent. Typically we can get a, a cc of graft from an incisor or three to four cc's of particulate from a molar or about three times the volume of the tooth itself. Healing is shortened, infection is zero, and it's FDA approved. And you can see after one week how wonderful that tissue looks, which will allow for preparation of uh, a dental implant quite effectively and efficiently. Just beautiful, beautiful healing. After about a, um, seven or eight weeks of integration, uh, we decided to uh, take a, um, a CBCT to evaluate the regeneration of, of, of a bone in that area. And you can see that we do get um, formation of bone particulate in that site. Um, so I felt very comfortable uh, making another uh, flap so that I can actually see the integration uh, of the bone, how that bone has turned over, 
And I decided to place four Strawman BLT SLA Active from Strawman Corporation uh, into that site in preparation for a um, long span bridge, anterior mandibular bridge in that area. We will allow these very special implants to integrate for another eight weeks before we make our final impression. So the implants were strategically placed and again the site sutured, closed and allowed to heal quite effectively and efficiently. Uh, I feel very, very comfortable uh, with this bone grafting procedure. This is important when we, we to try to maintain the quality so, yes. and quantity of bone in that site, um, especially when dental implants are to be considered. Let's look at a second case here. And we have a uh, non-restorable maxillary molar tooth that we are atraumatically going to remove, as I showed you earlier. Um, this tooth is, is, is symptomatic, so we're going to anesthetize the area. And here we're using the Anutra system. I'm using my golden dent separators to separate the facial plate of bone from the root of the tooth. Using my golden dent physics forceps. Uh, to uh, atraumatically remove the tooth without damaging the facial plate of bone. We're placing pr uh, tension on the uh, palatal aspect of the root, placing the bumper as high up the vestibule. The tooth is luxated and removed with a tooth delivery instrument very atraumatically uh, and very simply for me. We're going to curette those three sockets extensively using our very sharp golden dent curette and going through the same process that we illustrated earlier, I'm going to take the coronal portion of this root out or separate it and clean, scrub and clean those root structures, place it in my, um, my dent and grinder and look at the amount of particulate that we receive from those three little roots. We then go through the process of um, Cleansing it, as we demonstrated earlier, for about 10 minutes. Remove the excess material. We have a membrane that is cut to size to protect the graft from invagination of epithelium. We're packing, we're going to flap this area so that I can see if there's any defect using the golden dent uh, Orban knife. Very comfortable. You can see there is a little bit of a facial defect, and we're going to want to place our membrane at least two millimeters beyond. We're going to elevate the palatal tissue, strategically place our membrane passively, and then take our, our, um, our prepared uh, graft material, and you can see my staff is doing this while I'm preparing the site. We're then going to uh, use the dent and wash, and we have our particulate ready to use in our, our site. We're taking our spoon and placing the graft material into the sockets, pressing firmly but not condensing, laying my membrane over the top so it's passively placed and simply suturing the uh, membrane in, in position. We'll then allow this site to, to heal. I like to bring my patients back in a week to remove the sutures, but we just have an ideal situation for a future implant.